What's up, it's Marco back on the Sage of Soccer channel. Today we're going to be talking about the USA men's national team Olympic qualifying game against the Dominican Republic. And man, it was a, a lot, an improved game for the USA team. I'm still not going to call it like a great performance because it really wasn't, but definitely an improvement over the Costa Rica game. I think that we were dominant the whole time from start to finish. We were really structured. I think the biggest problem was a little bit too safe. You could see the team was not making too many long balls, not too many dangerous plays. Just trying to, only attacking through standard means, and you could really see the times we were the most creative was on breakdowns. You had a situation where the ball got kind of out of control, and uh, Jesus Frere was able to play a really good ball in. Uh, Jackson Newell took a free kick quickly to play in Sam Vines, and uh, even the opening goal came from that with uh, um, Sacedo just getting onto the ball. And yeah, it really said a lot about the structure, I don't think it was the best for this team. I'll get into that later, but um, yeah, it shows how I think the players are very good because they were able to do well in those situations. You could really see it. It almost reminds me of, uh, if you've been watching the Premier League this year, uh, Sheffield United, how when <laughs> I feel like whenever they get a red card, they start playing their best. <laughs> they might have stayed up this year if they only played with 10 men the entire season. But anyway, um, I thought that we were dominating the whole game, except for the first five minutes of the second half when the Dominican Republic was really uh, making a couple of chances. But aside from that, it was a really good performance. And yeah, I think maybe they could have benefited from a 10. I think the best formation for the squad may be a 4 for 2 diamond. Uh, just be able to get Soto and Freire into the team. Georgi Mihalovic was looking really good. I think he can play the 10. Uh, maybe a bit too rigid tactically, but at the same time, if the senior team's going to be playing a 4 4 3 3. I'm fine with the youth team playing a 4-3-3, even if it's not the best for them. You, you'd like to have your youth team emulating the senior team, and I'm not going to be mad at that. So on to the individual players, and I think the biggest thing for this game with how much better we were playing was the midfield, and the main guy with that was Andres Pereira. He had a great game playing the six. He was able to dictate possession, and he was so huge for this team in the build-up, where um, I felt like our build-up play was really weak against Costa Rica. Pereira was able to come in calm down the midfield, and just help us keep the ball the entire time. Also in the midfield, uh, Johnny Cardoso and Jackson Ewell were both playing in an advanced role. Uh, Cardoso was getting a good amount of chances. He probably had our best chance the first half, uh, couldn't score a header, and he hit the post in the lead-up to the, the opening goal. And Jackson Ewell was actually looking, this is probably the best I've seen him in a USA jersey in a while, and at the eight, when I think he's usually he plays a lot deeper, but he was looking pretty good in that position, and he scored. So if he can keep that up, then... I'm definitely cool with Jackson Ewell staying on the field. Uh, the defense, I think it was also a lot better with the addition of uh, Kessler and uh, Julian Arroyo. Um, I think they really helped the build-up play as well, and uh, Arroyo was really getting forward well, as well as Sam Vines. Both those two were really going up and down the midfield well, and that's why I say I think we had the ability to play 4-4-2 diamond because those two were doing really well. Uh, in goal, JT Markinowski, um, he didn't have too much to do, but he was always ready when called upon, and... That was, I think that shows a lot of maturity for him, especially when he was uh, benched in the first game, and now he's just thrown in there, and he hasn't even had a preseason. I don't think he put a foot wrong or a hand wrong all game. Um, obviously not too much to do, but still, you'd like to see it, and uh, hopefully they rotate every goalie so Matt Freeze can get in. I want to see him play. But uh, yeah, on to the attack, and I thought that was the weakest part of the game today. Um, Jonathan Lewis, I had mentioned uh, in my... Last video that I think that my expectations for him are higher than everybody else because I've seen him do well at the senior level, but it was not the greatest game. He his end product really wasn't that good today, and really disappointing after how good of a performance he put forward in January. Uh, then Salcedo, he did have the assist for the opener, but aside from that, I really thought it was a pretty poor game. But hey, if you're an attacker and you get involved in the goal, like I can't be mad at you for that. Up front, uh, Jesus Ferrer and Sebastian Soto split halves and. Well, good to see Hayes for a healthy, but they really couldn't get involved in this game. They didn't get a chance to get the ball, get on the ball enough. And for had one good moment I mentioned earlier, but uh, yeah, they really were kind of invisible this game. Um, the good part for this game was the substitutions. Uh, Georgi Mihalovic, I thought he was the best player on the field today. Maybe just him going at uh, the Dominican Republic players with weak legs, but um, he was actually able to drive at the opponents. He was able to just make something happen, dribble through, and set up Dotson for a couple of goals. And Dotson, great job by him as well, playing in the more advanced role. Maybe he's a bit more natural at that than Cardoso and Ewell, but 
good finishes. Those aren't easy goals, and if you are able to have finishing like that in the first half, it wouldn't have gone this bad. But, yeah, great performance by those two subs. Um, Sebastian Soto, eh, not the greatest. Uh, Benji Michel, I wasn't too impressed with him, but uh, did have did throw in a nice ball to uh, Jordan Mihaljevic for the fourth goal. And uh, Taron Tespin got on for a little bit. Not too much for him there. I think it was a really dominant game for the USA team, but pretty disappointing on the attacking front. But once the substitutions came on, it was looking really good. So, yeah, good game for the USA team. They're on to the next round. Hopefully they'll be able to qualify for the Olympics this year. That'd be really fun for this team. Um, in other news, we have uh, for the senior team, uh, due to uh, uh, protocols, uh, Tyler Adams, Tim Weah, and Niccolo Giacchini, they all were uh, unable to report to the USA squad. So uh, Jordan Sebeccio and uh, Christian Capi were added. Man, it sucks to lose Tyler Adams. We haven't had to get, we haven't had like our complete team in such a long time, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is, and if it keeps him playing at Leipzig, I don't know, it is what it is. Uh, Tim Weah, again, sucks to lose him, and our wide situation isn't that great now. The only guys we really have there that feel comfortable with are Giovanni Ray and Christian Pulisic, which, <laughs> I mean, saying that, it's not too bad. It's Reyna and Pulisic, but, I mean, you know, it sucks to not see Tim Weah. He's a great guy, and I do rate Nicolo Giacchini, but um, I don't think uh, he Savaccio is going to be too much of a downgrade, and it'll be interesting to see Chris Capi. I'm not too high on him, but hey, if he can have good, good performance, then good for him. Yeah, that's my thoughts on this USA team. Man, great job. Really hoping to see us in the Olympics this year. It would be a lot of fun. And yeah, that's all I've talked about. I'll see you.